the power of a protagonist is very influential. It can be used either as a, I would say, astral entity in which the viewer can project themselves onto to relate to the experience of the show, or it can be a personality that the viewers can relate to or probably even look up to in the series. And for the case of JoJo's Golden Wind, I found myself in neither of those camps. And when I look and well, OK, I'm going to keep this very brief um, or at least try to keep this very brief. But really, the concern that I had with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind was that Giano Giovanni was nothing like his predecessors. And that may be his gimmick. I'll say for lack of a better term, but it really separates him from the other JoJo's. For example, like, OK, I guess my background with JoJo. So I enjoyed JoJo's Bizarre Adventures with Jonathan. He was a very, you know, upstanding character. You know, I guess he was trying to be of high moral status, but you kind of understand where he's coming from with, you know, he, you know, that's the first introduction into Dio as well. And Dio, of course, is a very charismatic character. We'll get on to Dio. And then moving along to Joseph and Joseph was also very charming and charismatic in two in that character. You know, he's bold and dynamic. That was the thing about the Jojo's main protagonist. And the tipping point, I'll say, it really started with Jotaro, Kujo Jotaro, because he kind of felt like he didn't really have too much of a personality besides getting upset and beating up people. But I let it slide because Joseph was still there and the other supporting cast really kind of held it through. But with, uh, well, well, no, I, let me not skip Diamond is Unbreakable. Um, but with Diamond is Unbreakable, what was his name? Josuke? He was alright. <laughs> there wasn't too much to really remember, but it was forgettable. And it's the same case with this guy, Giano Giovanni. He, I don't understand how he could be the main protagonist of a JoJo, and then also the son of Dio, but not have none of the charismatic dynamic of either of those two camps. And I think that's really my gripe with JoJo's. This is just a little quick video just to say, these aren't the JoJo's you're looking for. <laughs> but I found myself in an experience or in an environment where I never thought I would see myself. Well, actually, no, I saw this coming from Diamond is Unbreakable. Uh, this JoJo just feels like a watered down Jotaro. But then he, he's like, he's a watered down Jotaro, but then he's also a watered down Dio. And then, so it's like the the worst of both worlds. And I didn't think that was cool, to be honest. I watched like two episodes. I gave it a shot. I watched two episodes and nothing really stood out to me that said, oh yeah, this is bizarre, like cool bizarre. This is just bizarre for, hey, it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I guess. Yeah, right. Okay. 